In this video, you will be able to understand maximum power transfer theorem with respect to dependent sources. The statements, the application of this theorem in electric circuit analysis. So I am Professor Mohan B.S., a student professor in the department of Ripley, SJPIT. So let's see the statement of the theorem. It says the maximum power can be transferred to the source from the source to the load only when the value of RL that is your load resistance is equal to your Thevenin equivalent resistance. So this theorem takes the help of Thevenin theorem. So when you're solving problems, we'll be actually applying Thevenin equivalent circuit. We'll be drawing Thevenin equivalent circuit. So what are the parameters in Thevenin equivalent circuit? So if you see, if we have a circuit A and we have some load parameter which is connected across A and B, the power can be delivered from the circuit A to the load only when the value of RL is equal to RTH. So what it might be a circuit? If you can see, it can be reduced to a Thevenin equivalent circuit or a practical voltage source. That is a voltage source in series with and its internal re resistance. So I hope to see how do we calculate VTH and RTH? You can explicitly see the videos with respect to Thevenin theorem or you can also refer here in this maximum power transfer theorem video. However, you can see in this graph as the vary of as we vary the resistance at some point reaches maximum at what point at a point where RL is equal to RTH. So only when your load resistance is equal to Thevenin equivalent resistance only at that, that point we will have maximum power. And the power is just 50% of its total. Only 50% of the total power is transferred. And this maximum. And as further we vary the value of RL, the value of power will reduce. So in this area, the shaded region, RL is less than RTH. The power is reaching its maximum. After it has reached, as we still increase the value of RL, you can see the graph depletes. So this is its graph. And you can see the x-axis with respect to resistance and y-axis with respect to power and the maximum power is just 50% of its total power. So let's take a problem to understand. So they've asked us to find the value of RL using maximum power transfer theorem. Although we have seen in the previous slides, we have taken the use of Thevenin theorem. So in Thevenin theorem, what all parameters one has to find? So one has to find the value of VTH and the value of RTH. So let's see one by one. So first step as shown here, we have to remove the load resistance and let us mark the terminal as A and B. And in step one, we will find the value of VTH. So let's apply mesh analysis to find. So we'll use assume the current in clockwise direction. And if you start from left of corner, it is 1ki plus 1ki plus 2vx minus 12 is equal to 0. As we are aware, we have only one equation and the equation is to solve for i. So let us replace this vx for. So what is vx? So vx is equal to, as we know by Ohm's law, it is simply r into i. The resistance is 1 kilo ohm and the i, the current is hitting the positive terminal, thus the I is positive, the rest in the current is positive. So substituting this in place of V, so we get the equation as 2Ki plus 2 into 1Ki is equal to 12. Or we can simply write this simplified as 4Ki is equal to 12 or I is equal to 12 by 4k the current is 3 milliamps so what are we up to so we are supposed to find what is vth and what is vth which it is simply voltage here across the load that is vab so how do we solve for vth or vab right so now if you observe so if you observe here across A and B towards your right side, what all elements do you observe? We observe 1 kilo ohm and we observe 2 Vx. So, writing the equation for this, start again starting from left top corner, 
it is 1k into y plus 2vx minus vab assuming this is positive and negative is equal to 0 substituting the value of i that we are aware in the previous uh, steps we have solved for i and we've got the answer as 3 milli and then substituting the equation for vx we're getting it as 3 volts right so the value of i into i into 1k will get this as 3 plus 2 into 3 is equal to VAB or we can simply say VAB as nine volts. Thus your VTH is equal to VAB is equal to nine volts. Now so why we are why one has to observe towards right only? If I have a window here I can also no, if this is a window I can also observe in this direction. So if I do that, what will be the equation? Again, as we need VAB, I'll apply from left top corner and for that I'm using another color. So we have this equation as, I'll, instead of writing 1k, I'll write as plus Vx as we have, as we have solved for this drop. So plus Vx plus VAB and minus 12 is equal to 0. That is 3 plus VAB is equal to 12 or VAB is equal to 12 minus 3 or VAB is equal to 9 volts. So one can use any side as it has been parallel from between A and B. If you see we have two branches, I repeat across A and B we have two branches towards left and right and we know parallel the voltage remains same with polarity. Thus towards the left you have 9 volts top being positive towards the right also we have 9 volts top being positive drop. So use any method to solve to find for VTH or VAB. Now after finding this we have to find what is ISC. So as told use either these two branches to solve for VTH or use these two branches to solve for VTH and you'll get the same answer. You need not verify an exam use any one branches to solve for. Now let us solve for ISC. So let us assume the current going down for ISC and we can use node voltage analysis if I assume this as a ground potential. So this also I would say as ground potential. So the current traveling in this path and the current traveling in this path. So I will call this current as I1 and I will call this current as I2 and by KCL applying, we are by applying KCL we can say ISC is equal to I1 plus I2. Right. So then how do we solve for I1? So I1 is simply by Ohm's law 12 by 1 kilo ohms and then what is I2? Right. So I2 is 2 Vx divided by 1 kilo. But I have to solve for Vx and what is Vx here? So Vx is as you can see from this Vx is simply so Vx is current I1 into 1 kilo ohm. So current 1, current I1 is simply 12 milliamps. So 12 milliamps into 1k, it is 12 volt. So we get the value of I2 as 2 into 12 divided by 1k, which is equal to 24 milliamps. Thus you can simply say, as shown above, ISC is 12 milli plus 24 milliamps summation of these two which is 36 milliamps. So this also can be solved by mesh analysis just, just, just to verify that you know uh, you need not always use any one method in exam whichever is easier for you to solve you can apply that method. So let us see by mesh analysis also. So let us take this as mesh 1 and this as mesh 2. So when we apply for mesh 1, we get the equation as 1k i1 minus 12 is equal to 0. i1 is equal to 12 divided by 1k which is 12 milliamps. So when we do for mesh 2, we get the equation as 1k i2 plus 2vx is equal to 0 
as we are aware we need to rewrite this vx and vx can be written as shown here vx can be written as 1k into i1 which is nothing but 12 volts so we substitute the value of 12 here we get the equation as 1k i2 plus 2 into 12 is equal to 0 so i2 is equal to minus 24 by 1k which is minus 24 milliamps right now we have to we need to find isc so what is isc or where is isc isc is going here it's going downwards so what is the equation for isc the equation for uh, equation for isc by with respect to the two meshes are i1 minus i2 so why is it i1 minus i2 why not something else so for that you can refer our previous videos on mesh current analysis so i1 we have got this as 12 milli minus of i2 as minus 24 milli plus our answer is 36 milliamps which is as same as what we have got under nodal analysis right so you are really i think you were aware that when solving with respect to 2vx we have got this as plus so when we're solving you've taken this current i2 in node voltage analysis and you can see as the current is going opposite direction it is positive now so we have solved for vth and we have solved for isc so we've got this as 9 and this as 36 milliamps so the value of rth is equal to the value of rl which is vth or vab whole divided by isc that is 9 by 36 milliamps which is equal to 250 ohms so this is our vth which is 9 ohms and this is our rth across a and b so we have our load resistance which is actually equal to rth which is 250 ohms only at this value we get maximum and any other value we get par minimum okay so so we know p is equal to i square into r so we are in, in turn related with respect to maximum power with respect to rl so i square would be the current the current is simply v by r that is 9 divided by 500 into 250 which is your ri so we get the power as 81 milliwatts So now let us try to compare for some data. So here what I'll do is at this point I'll say RL is equal to RTH and we've got this as 81 milliwatts and I'll take the lesser values let us say I'll take randomly 100 and 20 I'll take larger values so you know 250 is RL or RTH. So I'll be taking this as 400, 800 and let us say 1500. So when, when RL is 20, we're getting power as 22.22 milliwatts. Similarly, when you're getting, uh, taking the value of RL as 100, we're getting the power as 66.12 milliwatts. And when we're taking the value of RL as 400, we're getting it as 36.68 milliwatts. And when we're taking the value of 100, we're getting it as 58.78 milliwatts. And when we're taking as 1500, we're getting the power as 39.67 milliwatts.
So you can see only when RL is equal to RTH, we are getting maximum power. So thus, if we plot a graph for RL versus P max, right? So our graph would be in this way. Only at this point, when RL is equal to RTH, we get positive power. So these are for the data from 1, 1 and 2, and these are for 4, 5 and 6. This data is for the third serial number. So in this way, we have verified in this case that the power is maximum when RL is equal to RTH. However, this we need not do in exam. Only if they specify for more than 8 or 10 marks, you can do this type of column. Else, just find what is asked here. So if asked us to determine uh, the value of RL and the maximum power, so it is 250 ohms and 81.3 milliwatts. So thank you for watching video. Please do subscribe our channel to enhance your knowledge. Thank you.